Hello, and welcome to Bear Necessities. My name is Bear, and today we've been given more information about the new EverQuest 2 Origin server. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I think the best way to do this is to quickly just skim over the new post today by the Darkpaw team. There's a lot of things that we already know, so I'll quickly just skim over those, but the things that are new we can discuss in more detail. So first off, it says the Origin server is coming beta. Taking it back to 2006, we know that. And then there's this big picture of Anashti Sul. So Anashti Sul is the goddess of, of undeath, and it's going to be what they name the new Origin server. I think it's fitting for the Origin server, so I definitely like that change. They mention it right here. It says, and just like her, we're bringing back something. We're bringing something back from the great beyond. The server will start in the Shattered Lands era with no expansions unlocked, and you'll get the to experience the look and challenge of the classic world of Norath. They already mentioned that systems seem less complex, stats and gameplay will be reflective of the 2006 era, and there will be more focus on grouping with that old school MMO feel. If you missed out on the 2006 version of EverQuest 2, you should check out the redux of it in 2024 on Anashti Sul. It's going to be mind blowing. So that's all good. We all kind of knew that, but here are some things that we did not know. So the beta is going to start on May 2nd and it's going to be tiered. So that means that first off, we'll start from one to 12 for the first, I guess, two weeks. And then it'll be from 12 to 22 and then it'll be 22 to 32. So I am wondering why they didn't include T4 and T5. Maybe they just don't have the time or maybe T1 to T3 will give them enough data to fix throughout, or maybe they just want us to kind of discover the higher tiers and that'll just be part of the experience, <laughs> who knows, but it definitely has its ups and downs and it could be good or bad. I guess we'll just have to see. Um, there is a link here on, on the post on how to set up beta i will include it in the description below so if you've never participated in a beta and you want to you can just follow this guide it's pretty easy and it'll allow you to download that beta server and then be able to test on it so let's look at some of this other information first off there will be no spell research we already knew that the second one this is a big one here so chrono will not be able to be consumed traded or sold on origin servers so there's going to be no Chrono on the server. So again, you'll still be able to consume these on other servers for game time. But in general, I do think this is going to be a really good change. I think taking Chrono just out of the economy definitely makes a profound impact on that economy in the right direction. People will definitely still sell services and such for Chrono or like power leveling, et cetera. And people will continue to probably buy Chrono on other markets, for example. But in general, I think just adding these extra steps for these nefarious people, as well as those people who just want to RMT and making it less convenient is always going to be a good thing in the right direction. And it could potentially disincentivize people doing this sort of behavior. So I really, I really hope this is good. I really hope that it's a good test on EQ2 and maybe even potentially they can do this on EQ1 TLPs in the future. Who knows? I guess we'll see. Um, but going further on, six week beta, it's all mentioned above there. This is a cool one. Attributes have been restored to their secondary functionality. I talked a little bit about this. I still do want to go into each of these stats when beta actually comes out so that we can give like an in-depth analysis of them. But they do mention here that like agility helps with your avoidance, intelligence increases ability potency. So if it's all abilities, this definitely would be different than it was in 2004, 2006, because back then intelligence was just spell potency. So we'll see if, if, if it actually affects all abilities because that could definitely change some things. Strength will increase melee damage and wisdom will grant extra resistance. I, I really think this is potentially just a typo. I think this is just going to be spell potency, but I guess we'll see and uh, we'll see on beta and see how that works. It says all bosses will be the original stat buff packages. 
I do wonder what that means as well. Is that just raid encounters? Is that uh, heroic encounters? Who knows? I guess we'll have to see. It says no weight. It could not be restored. We always talked about that a little bit. Unlocks have not been decided yet. However, we do have new forums and we'll be able to pull and discuss unlocks before we launch. So when he means unlocks, I think that is in regards to just unlocking new expansions, of course. So that's something that I think we'll talk about. And it all also just depends on like what the experience is like. If it takes a long time to get to level 50, then unlocks may be pretty long in between them. So I think all those things will factor into what the unlock duration will be and how fast people kind of get through the content. So no holiday events. So like all, a lot of the holiday events were added way later. So I think it makes sense for them not to be on this server. It says there will not be, or there will be a marketplace, but it will be very limited. So still no details on what that means. If, if there's going to be like really powerful XP pots, if it's going to be just things like services and potentially cosmetics, who knows? It will not be free trade. So that just means like a lot of the raid gear and things like that are going to be no drop like they are on the normal servers and not the free trade servers. So here's a, here's another big one here. It says this server will be on its own design depot. So I think design depot is potentially just like a industry term or something that they use at Dark Paul. So I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I assume that maybe an easier way to think about it is that they've essentially just split off live and origins in a similar manner as like World of Warcraft live and classic. So they, they, they even mention here that uh, in the second line here that it cannot be affected by live design updates and vice versa, but it will, will share some things like code and art assets. I think this makes sense. Um, meaning that like a lot of the mechanics and things should be like they were back in 2006 and they're not going to be affected by live mechanics, but they are going to be able to use things like database authentication so like for example if you do go to a live server and you consume a chrono then you should be able to utilize that game time that game time on origins or you know you're going to have the same username and password to log in via origins as you do with live so that makes total sense um but i think that's i mean this is this is a really cool change this is something that I think potentially if it goes well, this could be the template for future TLE servers. So I think this is a really good, really good change. Also here, Freeport and Kinos are back to their old school in both appearance and functionality. I talked about this in the last video, but also things like livable neighborhoods and their quests. This is one thing that we didn't know about are back. It says, of course, with the scope of changes, these, these will need a lot of testing. So. That's why this beta is going to be important, but also their quest line should be back. So that should be really cool. No persistent instances. We talked a little bit about this, but really that just means um, when you go in and you do an instance like Varsoon or in Chamber of Immortality, or if you go into a raid instance, you will have to complete it. So there's not going to be, I go in and kill one or two bosses and then we quit for the night. And then we come back tomorrow and we use that same instance to kill the last boss. You will have to clear the entire thing. So I think this is this is good. And, and it's not going to be that big of a deal in Shattered Lands. Because a lot of the raid content and even the heroic content, you should be able to finish in one night or in one, um, in one sitting. So like, for example, a lot of the tier 5 raids only have like one boss in them like you go into meeting of the minds and you kill some trash packs and then you kill a boss or you go into epic angler and you kill some trash you kill a boss and that's it so i don't think that should be a big deal for those as more expansions do come out though i do think this could potentially be an issue um and it's something that they may want to revisit and then finally no trade skill Subcombines. It says the current build is right after subcombines for crafting remote. So we already mentioned that. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's kind of the updates that we've gotten. And I mean, there's some really good news in here. I think a lot of people are really excited about this. There's a lot of people who have on the Discord that are super excited. A lot of people who haven't been playing the TLEs because they're too much like live. Uh, I do think we'll come back for these. And I think just in terms of user acquisition for the company, I think this is a good step in the right direction. Well, that's it for, for now. If you want more content like this in the future, I am going to be playing on beta. I'll probably do some live streaming. I'll probably do some videos. So uh, make sure you like, uh, comment this video, comment on this video and subscribe to the channel and you will get more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.